Hi, this is a pattern and tutorial for a hand-sewn face mask for those of you who might not have a sewing machine. It has wire inside and a gathered edge and elastic to go around the ears. I have modeled it after this mask that I had purchased for a, a trip to India relatively recently and I donated the other ones but I kept this one to measure and so you can see that it is very similar to the one that I've made that's the pattern that I created and if we look closely at this original mask we can see that it stretches and so ultimately it's made out of a square piece of cloth and then that crimping gives it the appearance of being a rectangle. They have folded in this pattern, kind of pyramid-like, and so you might consider doing that if you are using a sewing machine with this pattern, but uh, the way that I'm doing it is unique to hand sewing. And so here, if you want to pause the video, these are the dimensions of the different parts of the original mask that I'm basing this on. We're going to change the wire though, we're not going to keep that original small wire. So here, if I am making my fabric to start, I want to cut out my square to be seven and a half inches square. I'm doing that with two pieces of fabric and I'm going to use a bone creaser or plastic creaser to get the dimensions right as I fold my corners in. You could certainly just iron it if you do not have a creaser, but it does help with being precise. And so here on my ruler, um, this is my line for a quarter of an inch. This is the line for a half of an inch. And I'm using this line in the middle. So uh, just shy of a half an inch is where I am creasing and folding in just so that I have a little bit larger seam allowance than the traditional quarter of an inch seam allowance. The yellow fabric that I'm using is one that I dyed naturally with turmeric, and I like the idea of having that turmeric against my face. Maybe that just makes me happy rather than doing anything, but that is the fabric that I'm using. And then this is a tighter weave striped fabric that I'm using. So I've got both of these creased, and now I'm going to pause and iron them. All right, I've ironed these under, and I've also tucked under my corners. I ironed top and bottom first, then I ironed the sides in, and then ironed these so that the corners will be able to match without creating a lot of excess bulk. I've also cut at six and a half inches a piece of um, internal facing. So there's been a lot of interesting information shared by some other people, especially Deborah Marlene Smith had a great post. And so this is some interfacing that I have with no glue in it. It's just for making a pattern. You can see the label here, perhaps. No, wrong side. <laughs> so this is what I'm using this tracing cloth, interior facing. You could also use something like this shopping bag that I got uh, a while back. And so the thought is that these things that are non-woven can stop particulate better than just the cotton cloth, but of course not as well as a real mask. But if we're doing this, we can add a little something in there. So I'm adding this material inside. You could even add you know, one of each and have a four layer mask. As I look at this mask, it appears to be made with one, two, 
three, four layers total. But for this time, for this demo, this is what I'm doing and that's how I'm adding my internal layer. You could easily add another internal layer in the same place or in the other piece. Now I'm going to rotate one of these so that my corners are opposite and place them together so that I'm avoiding excess bulk. You could use pins. I'm choosing to use some wonder clips. And I'm just pinning each of the corners or clipping each of the corners together. And now this last corner is where I am going to begin sewing across the top of the mask. So I'm going to cut some of this thread. I like to use DMC Pearl Cotton size 8, but of course any thicker thread that you have will work. This is a Dritz Milliner's needle, and again anything that you can get around the needle and through the fabric can work. And I'm going to begin by securing it with a quilter's knot, some interlacing, um, overlapping needle on top of thread, and then with the long part wrapping one, two, three times around to create a knot that will hold tight. So here I'm going to sew across, and this is the top of the map. So if you are using something like these stripes, you want to just consider if you want vertical or horizontal. I'm going for horizontal stripes. And now I'm going to bury my knot inside. And then my first stitch that I take will be to the outside edge of the mask just to make sure that that knot isn't going to be abrasive against your skin or visible. And now with my favorite, my Clover Protect and Grip thimble and this Little House Rubber Gripper, I'm going to make my way across the top of the mask using a running stitch and sewing very close to the edge of the mask. This top of the mask is a place where I plan to put some wire. There are lots of options for wire and on the original mask the wire doesn't go all the way across the face of the mask but I'm finding after I tried replicating that twice that I think that it will actually stay in place much better if the wire does just go across the whole mask for our purposes. Um, you could use a twist tie would be a fabulous thing to just stick inside of there. Um, I've seen people using floral wire. I'm going to just stab stitch here at the end. And now I'm going to go in and secure this at the beginning of the side of the mask. And now I'm going to create a pocket for the wire by sewing my way across but leaving enough space for the wire to be inserted. And so here I'm going through all three layers. And this will keep that wire from floating around anywhere. We want it to be secure. Um, from what I have read and understood, if your mask isn't fully sealed to your face, then it won't be able to keep things out the way that it needs to. So I've got this pocket that I've made, and I am going to use 
bought this so many years ago at Joanne Fabrics probably. So I'm going to use a little bit of this wire and I'm going to fold it at the edge so that it won't pierce through as easily and also so that it won't hit my face. And then I'm going to measure how much wire I need to go all the way across the mask. The amount that I folded on this side, I'll want to fold on the other side. So I'm clipping that off a little bit large. And now just shy of the edge, I'm going to create another fold. And so this is the wire that will go across and I'm going to slide it just like an underwire bra in there. I think that if the wire needs to be removed in order for, for things to be washed, etc., that that's also the easiest and most helpful way to be able to remove the wire later. I am going to secure it though. I don't want it to fall out. So I'm just going to sew my way back up to the top of the mask and then down. And you'll notice, again, that on this original mask, it doesn't go all the way to the tippy top here. So I want my elastic to start here. It was funny reading the measurements of the mask when I learned that all of the things are three and a quarter, um, or actually they're uh, six and three quarters inches. So both the elastic and the mask itself are cut to that size. So here I have so much elastic that I knew from working with them in the past that John Michael Kohler Art Center in Sheboygan, Wisconsin had a lot. They gifted me a spool of it when I was there just because they said we will never ever in a million years use all of the wire, all of the elastic that we have. Um, and so it's actually being driven now by a friend. Sorry, I'm trying to measure, count eight unsuccessfully. So I'm cutting this at eight inches so that we have enough space to really secure it in there. And I need two pieces of elastic. So anyways, I had a friend who was already up in Sheboygan anyways. I'm not certain why, but she grabbed it. No human contact. They just put it out in the back behind the museum and she got it in her car. And we have three Rubbermaid containers worth of this elastic. So if you need some for your project, let me know. But also it's heavy, so if you want to contribute to help pay for shipping, or better yet, if you're near Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, if you want to just come get it, that would rock. I'm going to put about half an inch worth of that elastic inside. And I'm going to stab stitch my way across here, stabbing several times through the elastic to make sure that it won't move. And now I'm going to create a running stitch. Oh, actually, so this part I think is important. I'm going to tie a knot in my thread right here to make sure that nothing wiggles from this point. So it's a tailor's knot. I'm making a loop going under, pulling that loop taut, just like I'm wrapping a birthday gift. And so that knot I'm hoping will keep things from sliding around. I'm going to come up and out the part of the mask that is facing me. And now I'm going to start to gather my stitches. And I want to be in enough, this is part of why I have that larger than normal seam allowance, so that I'm definitely securing the interfacing with my stitches, but also close enough to the edge that I'm not, not grabbing the edge. So I can get a whole lot of stitches in one pull. And then I don't need to pull that taut when I'm done because it's going to remain gathered. Okay. 
And now I'm ready for some more elastic. So I'll just send my needle back to the inside. Before I add this elastic, I want to make sure that I've got the right dimensions for the mask. So this side needs to be three and three quarters of an inch in width. So I'm measuring here on my measuring table, one, two, three, and then I'm going to pull that out just a little bigger to hit three quarters. And now I'm going to tie that same tailor's knot right here to maintain that amount of gather in the mask. So you can see that will stay and compared again to that original mask that I'm modeling after, they're the same size. So here I want to loop my elastic, making sure it's not twisted. And again, I'm going to submerge about half an inch so that I've got, again, a similar amount of elastic on the side as that original mask. I just tied my knot internally, so I need to first stitch to get back onto the outside of the mask. And now I'll stab stitch through my elastic. And so if you were using a sewing machine for this pattern, rather than doing this gather, you would simply fold in that pyramid shape. You would fold it and continue to sew around. But I'm especially showing this as hand sewing because that is something I'm an expert on. I'm not an expert on masks, but I know a lot about hand sewing. And there may be people who don't have sewing machines who of course can't go out and buy them now who want to make a mask. And so that is why we are getting into hand sewing here. So again, I wanna make sure that I am piercing through my inner lining and I'm sewing these two edges along the bottom of the mask securely together. This is the easiest side of the mask. We don't need to insert any wire and we don't need to add any elastic. And I'm just tugging that to pull it tight as I go. that's pulled tight. Now I want just a couple of stitches here before I insert the elastic. Again, I want about half an inch inside, enough that it can be really secure, that the edge of the elastic won't fray. If you're using a different kind of elastic, say you have round elastic, that you could tie a knot inside of it just to make sure that when you're stitching it in place, you're good. Also, sometimes for other sewing projects, sometimes I'll have a pair of underwear that's starting to fall apart or not doing well, but the elastic is still intact. So, you know, say you don't have any elastic um, and a spool like what I have, you might have a pair of underwear that's ready to be retired and that could be used to go around your ears. Just cut the elastic off of it. Nobody will ever know that it used to be underwear. And, you know, and this is for something for yourself. You probably would not want to give your old underwear to a hospital. But it is, if you're just trying to make one or two masks for yourself, that could be a good elastic source. Okay, so again, I want to measure here three and three quarters of an inch for the side of my mask. And now I'm going to create a knot. Ooh, that's not quite the right place. There we go. And I'm going to insert this side of the elastic, very careful that I am not getting it twisted at all. 
and oops wow I forgot a few things so here I accidentally got that knot on the inside let's see if I can wrap around so at least it doesn't bother my face There we go. But ideally, you would have gone to the middle there instead of tying your knot on the part that's against your face. Stab stitching to secure. And unstitching so that that whole side is sealed. And now I want to hide my knot, so I'm going to make one more stitch and then come up as smoothly as I can in between the two layers with my needle. And here I'm going to tie my very last set of tailor's knots. So looping, holding, pulling. And now I will send my needle back through that exact place where my knot came out, and then I'm going to come out through the mask on the other side. And I'll give that a nice tug, and that is going to hide my knot. So I'm just snipping that off, losing that. And so you can see with this internal facing, it's a little more has a different sound from the pure cotton mask and <clears throat> this wire because it's going from edge to edge it's not popping out that looks good and secure you can make a nice um, well formed around your nose area and that is my mask I hope everyone stays healthy there are lots of resources for learning about the materials to use that will be you know, certainly more informed than I am but Given just recent research on the internet, this is what seems to me like the best that I am able to do at present with the materials I have access to. So uh, stay safe and happy. The best thing, way better than a mask, is to just stay home. And so hopefully you can do a lot of that. Thank you, guys.